Hey friends, are you unsure of what to say on social media or what to even send in your weekly emails? Well, what if creating content could be easy? Would you be looking for a shortcut to creating consistent content? Yes, consistent content, because you know consistency is key. Well, let me tell you, you are not alone when you feel like you're struggling on what to post or what to write in emails. And we know that you have that product part of your business down. But as you're listening to this podcast, you probably already know that to get more people to your products, to buy your products, you need to create great content. Oh, I know, I see. I keep saying content, and that's the dreaded C word. And we can't tell you how many product bosses tell us that they want to create great content for their audience and their customers, but they don't know what to say, or they are so busy, they can't find the time, or they really, really, really don't want to be the face of their brand. Well, no worries, because that's exactly why we created a year of content. It is your shortcut to creating consistent content that resonates with your audience and brings more loyal customers who can't wait to buy your products. If you want to see how easy this is and how easy it is to create content for your audience and your customers, head to www.ayearofcontent.com. Welcome to the Product Boss Podcast, where we help product-based businesses grow their sales and improve their strategies. Hey, everyone. I want to introduce you to my co-host and biz bestie, Mina Kunlo Sitap, an Amazon guru that has built a multi six figure product based business. In introducing the other half of the product boss, Jacqueline Snyder, she has helped launch and grow over 500 fashion apparel and accessory brands, even one of her own. And together, we share our inventory of secret weapons that will help you dig deep and do the work it takes. Are you ready? Let's build together. Hey, product bosses. Did you know that every Wednesday, we have a live talk show called Bosses and Breakfast, where we chat business, mindset, mom life, and everything in between. It's a really fun time and it feels like a conversation amongst friends. In fact, sometimes we have conversations that we don't necessarily know that they're going to lead to where they lead, but we get such an amazing reaction from our listeners and from our community and from our students that we actually wanted to bring it to you to hear today. Yes, our favorite thing about Bosses and Breakfast is that we get to get together, we get to laugh, we get to be inspired about what's happening, and we get to check in with you and re-motivate you on why you're working so hard. So join us next time. We'd love to see you there. And here's that snippet from one of our shows that got tons of positive response, where we all walked away feeling more inspired and motivated for the week. So let's jump in. Okay. So there's a conversation we want to have today that is a little bit off of what we talked about last week with you. So last week we asked all of you who has a fear of success and we talked through it. And a lot of you raised your hand and said, I have a fear of success, which is totally okay. And when you were watching live, you saw right then and there that you were not alone in that feeling of a fear of success. Mm -hmm. Right. So what we're realizing, and you could tell us if this resonates, is that a lot of you were afraid of success because you think that if you are successful, the work, the time that you're going to have to take to spend on building this business will take time away from the priorities in your life, like being with your family, being with your friends, having time for self-care, just time as a whole is the fear. You're, you have a fear of loss of time if there is success in your business. Does that feel aligned with you as you're listening or maybe not? (laughs) Did I get it? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You did great. It's sometimes we think if we are successful, we'll be so spread so thin. We won't have any time to do anything that matters. Okay. Getting a lot of yeps, yeses. When will I find the time if I'm a successful? It's that feeling of not being able to do it all if you're to add more to your plate. Because I know yesterday, even we were talking to a lot of our students and they were saying that they are ve- feeling quite overwhelmed right now. Yeah. So cakes in a cup said, my fear is I, will I be able to keep up? Does that feel like it resonates? That if you are successful, if you hit a certain amount of revenue in your business, it could be anything. It could be working to 50,000, a hundred thousand, half a million. It could be any number because 
most of us feel this way. Mina and I, as we're climbing multi-million on the way to eight figures, which is a, a crazy goal that we never, ever in our lives ever thought we would ever say out loud. But when we say it, her and I have a lot of conversations about time. And Mm -hmm. okay, can we grow this business to where we want it to go? Revenue impact for all of you team that will build and be able to employ people, but also have the time and also the time of our team. Will they be able to have time and lives that they want? And so that's something for all of us that it's no matter what level you're at in revenue, time is the thing that is most scarce. Yeah. Time is scarce because people think about time and money and it's two of their biggest fears, right? Fear of success with money, fear of wasting time. But the thing is, even the way that society talks about it, we're spending time, we're spending money, we're saving time, we're saving money. And so the thing that people misinterpret though, is that time is actually the priceless thing and money is actually infinite. So time you can never get back. And money is infinite, so you can make more of it all the time if you need to. And when you're hearing us say that, it might feel like you're hearing us say, okay, wait, but I still won't have enough time, so it doesn't matter how much money I make, I'm not going to have time. But what we've really tried to press forward for all of you is that money affords opportunities and options. So when you start to generate more revenue, you are able to pay yourself more, right? Paying yourself more, maybe that you can afford someone to help clean your house. You may be able to afford someone to help pick up your kids from school, right? This is like the personal side. You may be able to outsource some of the home stuff that takes up a lot of your time because you might be still trying to build your business. The other side of opportunity and options when you make more money is that you can employ people or you can outsource tasks at work. You can get a bookkeeper so you do not need to do your own books. So when you're like, oh, I don't know about numbers, that might be a very easy thing to outsource for a few hundred dollars a month, but at least you're getting someone else to do it that's a professional. It might be that instead of you pulling together all your own graphics, you hire either like someone on Fiverr or you hire someone to handle your social media. Think about the time you could buy back because time is not replenishable. So you need to buy back your time. Yeah. Because even when Jacqueline and I are growing our business and all of you are growing your business, if you spent your time, you spent your time, you're not going to get it back. But if you spent your money, you can get more money to buy back your time. And so even as you're growing, the more money you make, the more options you have. That is a tale as old as time. I will tell you that because there's some people that are further along than others because of generational wealth. They've had more options because they have had more money. They've had more opportunities. They're just set up in a different way where they're like afforded an opportunity. We hear that all the time too. So the thing is that you need to make more money, but you need to also understand that the thing that you're buying is not the success, it's the time. Yeah. You're buying the time, the version of that success. So I'm going to read this. It's I don't know if it's a true quote from the Buddha. I think it might be. It's really impactful to me. So I'm just going to read it to you. The Buddha, when asked, what's the biggest mistake we make in life? The re- Buddha replied, the biggest mistake is you think you have time is free, but it's pri- priceless. You can't own it, but you can use it. You can't keep it, but you can spend it. And once it's lost, you could never get it back. So how does that feel hearing that? Because I, again, if we go back to the crux of why so many of us are fearful of being successful, it's because I think innately we know time is limited and it's not infinite. So my question to all of you is, we can sit here worrying about time, worrying that success is going to take time away from us, that we're going to lose. Like when you think about taking, you're like, this is going to take from me. This is going to take from me. When you're thinking all the things in your life that are the way, like you've started a business and you want to grow it, but then you're thinking my business is going to take, that's not necessarily the right way to think about it. You will spend time in the very beginning and dance, um, dancing studio said, hearing that's the reason for my stress. So let's just talk about this. Right now, when you're building businesses, when you're on your way up, there will be time spent. That is, I can't, we're not going to fluff it. You're going to spend a lot of time, but it's not going to look like this 
forever. But what you have to think about as business owners, as people, we're listening to the Buddha and thinking we have all this time. A lot of you also think in this way, I'm going to do this on my own. It's going to take time, but I'll get there eventually. So how Mm -hmm. long are you going to spend on this, like this treadmill or this like stationary bicycle, putting in all of this effort that's taking in so much time That's going to take you years and years to do this on your own and figure it out on your own when truly you're actually wasting time versus thinking, if I have money or I have a way to invest in myself, if I spend, because you're all spending time right now with us, but you're learning. Now let's talk about financially. You may think, okay, my business doesn't make enough money to invest in myself yet. My business doesn't make, make enough money to invest in a course. My business doesn't make enough money to hire someone with fulfillment. But if your time is limited, you're either going to just take more years up trying to get there, or you're going to work on trying to fast track this earlier and faster, knowing that you can make as much money as you need to make to pay for the things that you need and buy back your time sooner. Yeah. Does that make sense? So in that case, you're either saving up for it or you're investing in it with an idea of getting a return on your investment. So at that time, people are like, okay, I know that I have limited time. I want to shortcut this for me. And I don't want to spend my own time to save up and earn that money in order to do it. So I'm going to invest and, you know, pull into my savings or something, knowing that I'll get a return on investment. That's an idea of that. The slowest way is the free options. Google University, YouTube University, all those, where it's like you're Googling because it's an overabundance of information. You're overwhelmed with information instead of succinct information. Because usually in courses and things like that, that you're really investing, that you're putting mind into uh, your mind and money into, it's allowing you to cut as much as it it's allowing to you to keep. So it's really important that you cut out information as well because you're cutting out, you're getting focus in that point. A lot of times the the point of overwhelm is that people are like, I need to do all these things, but they're like tethers to you. So what if you were to cut the things that you didn't really need to do? Then you could move forward with more of a focus, taking less time and not like having to learn from your mistakes. You learn from you learn from the course. You learn from other people's mistakes. It just makes it easier on you to be able to move forward in a pace that you're like, okay, this is where I'm going. I'm pivoting along the way, but you have the right direction. Yeah. Jana says, yes, don't be me 15 years later with a blushing and cry face. Now that's my question to all of you. How many of you have felt like you're on a stationary bike And for how many years do you feel like you're on a stationary bike? So how long have you been doing what you're doing without growth, without opportunity, without making more money to pay yourself to get the things that you want in your life, right? To buy yourself options and opportunities. How many years have you been doing what you're doing without being able to hire someone to help you do production or fulfill? Okay, so on on Facebook, we have three, yes, like the last two years, two years and ready to change. Way too long, but I'm finally getting there. Way too long. Instagram, let me know from you all too. So two years, three years. We all feel that way too, by the way, as you can see. Yeah. We, 10 years over here on Instagram, we cannot get your three years back. We cannot get your two years, your 10 years, your seven years. So if you have felt stuck and we're still at the beginning of this year, then when are you willing to change? Are you willing to grow? Are you willing to do something different? Or are you going to stay stuck and keep making the same excuses? Because we get so scared of money. You get scared of either spending it or making it. You're scared of spending it or you're scared of making it. But our biggest fear, all of us as human beings is time, that we don't have enough time, that we don't have time to live the life we imagine, that we don't have time to be with the people we love. So it will take time to build your business. It will take time to hit a a revenue level that you want to hit. And you will put in that time and you will put in that effort the same way that we, if you went to college or you got through high school and the things that you did to get there, but you can then find more freedom when you're allowed to let yourself make money and know that Mm -hmm. when you get there, you'll know what to do when you're making that money, that you will be able, because you listen to us, you'll be able to buy back your time. Yeah. And I think that's when you start getting fearful of the idea of success. Know that when you have money, 
when you're making more money, you have more options to buy back your time. It's just a simple fact of life. So while, you know, the richest of rich people, they have all the options. They have all the opportunities. You know why? Because they can just hire somebody to do it. So know like that- every Kardashian has yeah. a nanny per child. Okay. That would be the dream. How do I know this? Because I interviewed (laughs) back in the day, let's tell you a quick LA story. Okay. Cause I've got fun LA stories. I had this, my husband's an actor and his manager was like, Oh, Lucy Liu's nanny no longer has a job because Lucy Liu's kid was older. And we were looking for a nanny. So we'll send her over. Okay. Lucy Liu's nanny. So this lady comes over, we're interviewing Mm -hmm. her in our like small house in our backyard with like our whatever. And then she's like, yeah, I have an interview tomorrow with Kourtney Kardashian to be one of her children's nannies. What do you mean? She has a nanny per child. And I was like, okay. So I was like, you're going to be at my little tiny house over here. And then tomorrow you're going to go interview at Kourtney Kardashian's house and be able to fly in private jets. So I don't know what you're going to choose lady, but obviously not us. So (laughs) <laughs> but I say that because we've also quoted, I don't know if you've heard that quote, like we all have the same hours on the day as Beyonce. Sure, a hundred percent. But do you know what Beyonce has? Oodles and oodles of money to pay people. She can sit here. She can sit here watching us while someone's doing her hair, her makeup and her nails at the same time. And other people are, are helping her with her kids and someone else is making her food. But also her mom was her manager who used to sew their clothes. Yes. She put in the hustle. So don't, don't forget about that, that they were just rich. She had, there were years and years that she worked her way up there and really leaned into her superpowers, her talents. So she did the things that she needed to do and she didn't do the things that she didn't need to do. And she really worked hard. It wasn't like she was an overnight success either. She was never scared of success, right? Because she knew that when she had a lot of money, she would get to live this life with multiple nannies and people doing her hair and real people doing her clothes if she wanted, not her mom sewing it. But it's a beautiful story. So it's just thinking about that for yourself. Don't be scared of success. Know that people attach that word freedom. In my mind, I'm like, I have no idea what that even means. But it's really easy for me to wrap my mind around if I'm successful, I can buy back my time. And what does that look like? Because time is priceless. And when you buy back your time, would you like to buy back? Because some of us like to do different things. So then imagine, okay, I've got money. It's not Beyonce money. It's just more money than we have. (laughs) Not yet. (laughs) Today. (laughs) Yeah. Because you and me are going to beat up Jay-Z and Beyonce. Jay-Z and Beyonce. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) But um, I have have a Jay-Z story right after this one. Okay. So real quick. But so that's the idea. You, each of you, I'm looking at you through the virtual screen get to choose what you want to do with your money. So some of you might like being in the bakery, making cookies all day. And right now that feels okay to you, but you may not want to be the person in the front at the cash register. So when you make more money, you stay and do the thing you want to do and you hire the person to be at the cash register. You may decide that you never want to cook a meal again. So you make enough money to order like Blue apron, right? Or like, I mean, or ho- a private chef. That. That's going like crazy. That's again, I know. Beyonce. Look. Blue but let's sh- say like okay. food delivery. Okay, how about this? You make enough Thank money you. to retire your husband. He's in charge of the food. He either orders it or does. You and me, blue friend. Apron. You and me. That's what yeah. we're doing right now. Because right? we no longer make our food in our house because our mm-hmm. husbands are now switching a little bit into support mode for us as yeah. our businesses are growing because it's requiring more of us. Now, does that mean next year our husbands will still be feeding us? Like they literally like bring us food like (laughs) to our Mm -hmm. tables. Will they be doing that next year? Maybe not. Maybe next year, Mina and I will have enough money to hire somebody to make us food. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there because if it's not a priority for them and it's not a priority for us, I know it sounds bonkers, but we never, three years ago when we started the product boss, did we, this was a side hustle. Let's just do a podcast talking to the infinite abyss. And maybe make a little bit of extra money to go see each other. That was literally Mm -hmm. the goal of this business. Now the goal of this business is like, hey, you want to hire someone to make all of our meals? That is like (laughs) never in my life. Well, if that's their expertise, (laughs) like why not? I know, but it's like, I I know sometimes they tell me that. Then they get to like- That's somebody else's dream life that they get to cook food for me. This is someone that a lot of you may follow. Rachel Rogers, when she hit it big- When she moved to a ranch, she hired ranch hands. And one of the things that her and her husband didn't want to do was cook. 
And so they hired a chef. And you look mm-hmm. at that and people are like, ooh, that feels, that feels real fancy. But we all need to eat. And that was a place that they decided to spend their money. Yeah. So she SOS- talks about it like, because a lot of us are like, I'll just have my husband do it. That's what my go-to used to be too. I'll just yeah, yeah, yeah. We're outsourcing to our you husband. Know, I, I don't want to do to the dishes. Why does that role fall on me? You need to help too. But guess what? He doesn't want to do it either. <laughs> this is the, uh, the breakup. I want yeah. you to want to do the dishes. <laughs> Who wants to do the dishes? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants to do the dishes. So then you hire it out. So her r- frame of thinking was that, why should he have to do it? This is what I have to remember when I'm like, I'll, my, I don't want to scoop the dry. Why should, I'll just have my husband do it. Well, he doesn't want to do it either, you know? So I'll just hire somebody. I'll make enough money to hire somebody because That way, I don't have to worry about him having to do it. I don't have to worry about me having to do it. And we've figured that out. There's things that he loves to do too. So it's like, he's not, I'm not using him as a catch-all anymore, like I used to. Which as partnerships in the home, that's what you try and do. Like you try and pass it back. So Heather says, I want to hire someone to do grocery shopping and meal prep. Okay. So she wants to make enough money in her business potentially because that's her or at work or whatever, but in your business, it's infinite. I want you to start thinking about your business, how it looks today or how it'll look a year or three years from now, or another business you start, you could make an infinite amount of money, more money than you could even possibly imagine with your own business versus when you work for someone. And what are you going to do with it? You're going to buy back your time to do what you want. Yeah. So for example, Heather wants to hire someone for grocery shopping and meal prep. Let me tell you a little thing. For $99 a year, I don't know if they raise the price, you can hire Instacart to do your grocery shopping, right? So then it's not a person every day, but you could hire Instacart. And, and then you can have a reoccurring list. And your meal prep, which Mina's done, which her mother or mother in law yelled at her once and was like, why don't you cut your own onions? You can buy chopped onions and chopped carrots. <laughs> yeah. And chopped which, anything. by the way, since my parents have moved here, remember I used to buy cut mangoes. That's right. Um, pomegranates that were already out of the the shell, Asian pears that were already, like I'd buy Asian pears and they would cut it for me sort of thing. So now I haven't had to do that because now they do it for me, but they still joke about that. They still are like, yeah, remember when Mina used to buy diced onions and you know, like it bothered them so much that now they're willing to do it for me. I'm like, sure, that's they fine cut, by they me. Cut them for they you. buy it and cut it for me. <laughs> so you're actually saving money. I and really outsource. am. I really am. And they enjoy it. So I'm just like, this works out nicely. But that's you know? an example, right? And someone yeah, else said- Yeah, we all are wired differently. <laughs> someone else said, I'd love to fold. I'd love someone to do my laundry or fold my laundry. And I know I've talked about this, but I'll just bring it up again. Because when I lived in New York City, you could literally have coffee and eggs delivered to your house. You can have cookies delivered to your house at 3 a.m. And people who lived in those buildings sent out their laundry. So then when we moved to New Jersey, we the fight of our lives was who's doing the oh, laundry? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. You should have seen her basement. So she's like, I know James will have to do the laundry because so I'm not doing happened? the laundry. Yeah, I'm so doing bosses and breakfast. Like, was, she's like, I know James will do the laundry. He'll be great at. He's home now. Laundry everywhere. Like, I think I did a story one day not on it. The expert on laundry either. Bonkers. <laughs> okay, so this is what we did because he's like, I don't want to do the laundry. You don't want to do the laundry. Who's going to do the laundry? Could we afford it back then? Was it something that was like, oh, we have so much money that like we can pay someone to do our laundry? Not necessarily, but for our own mental well-being and for our relationship and for us to be able to be with the people who mattered. Because remember, you could buy back your time for $40. I think we did it every week. A pound, right? No, $40 a week because it worked out to however much a pound. So let's say it was $40 a week on average. We would take all of those piles of laundry, put it in bags, put it out of our front door, schedule laundry pickup. They would drop it back off 24 hours later, folded better than you've ever seen anything folded in your life. So flat, so perfect for 40 bucks was cheaper than a marriage counselor. Right. <laughs> and Lisa says laundry is their favorite. Great. Oh my you goodness. do laundry. I need you in my house, Lisa. No, I like laundry when I have nothing else to do or like I'm watching a show or something, but people, you know what it is? It's because it takes time. You have to sit there and you have to wait for it. And it's not like an easy peasy, like go and do whatever. So, so I say that because even right now you all have limiting beliefs of what you can afford or can't afford. And you feel like it could be frivolous to send out your laundry or buy pre-cut 
vegetables. But that's just your first step in saying, I am a business owner and I do not need to chop the onions because if I chop, I'm not going to cook because I have to chop the onions. But if the onions were chopped, would it be easier for me to just take them and cook something? It saves you time. And remember what the Buddha said, supposedly, if this is a true quote, that our biggest mistake is thinking that we have more time. I'm just going to jump in really quick to interrupt this episode because I have to ask you a question. Can you believe we're already full steam ahead into another year? I know it's unbelievable. And we know you have big goals for your product business this year, and we're here to help you reach them. In all of our years helping product bosses, we find that one of the biggest things that they struggle with is setting their businesses up to truly scale and thrive. They don't know how to organize their time or handle the influx of orders when they do scale, or how to even stand out in a crowded market. So question for you, product boss, do you ever feel like you're juggling so much in your product business without knowing where to focus or how to reach your goals? We feel you. It's no secret being a product boss isn't easy, but there are things that you can be doing right now to help your business thrive this year. And we're here to help you do that. We are hosting a free series That includes three info-packed workshops to help you kick off your best year yet. So if you're feeling like you don't have enough hours in the day, or you don't even know what you should be focusing on to grow, or like your business can't even handle the influx of orders you want because you're making everything yourself, or like you don't know how to stand out in a crowded market, well, we've got you covered. That's why we created our upcoming free workshop series. The Product Boss's Guide to Your Best Year Yet. We're hosting three free workshops where we're sharing some of our biggest tips and tricks on how to have your breakthrough year in 2022. If you want to join us for free, just head to theproductboss.com slash best to save your spot. And let's grow this year together. So again, head to theproductboss.com slash best or head to the show notes and just click right there and we'll see you inside. So what are you going to do? Okay. So let's talk about business. Let's switch it from home to business. Okay. So business, because a lot of people said three right. years, two years are stuck. They're doing the same so, thing. They don't feel yes, growth. This month for a masterminder has been million dollar boot camp. We did visioning day last week and this week we did next 90. And so we big picture it. And then we do the next 90, which at the end of it, I was like, make sure you align it with your big vision. Because remember yesterday was next 90. And I was like, my wish and hope for you all is that you get to work here, your zone of genius, because you get to do whatever you want, right? Because when you get to work there and you're successful and you have, you're making money and you're working in your zone of genius, it's like the opposite of burnout. It makes you have a vibrant life. So that's my wish for everybody is that they get to work in their zone of genius because there's some people that love laundry and there's some people that don't. There's some people that love fulfilling their own packages, believe it or not. There's some people that don't. There are some people that like, I don't know, like making the actual candles and will never not make them, but they don't like the other things. Or there's some people that like putting on the labels and some people that don't. There's some people that only want to do the design and the research and development and leave the rest and take it away. So Jimmy getting... said, I prefer not to build that skill set. Good choice. That's right. So you figure out what is your zone of genius. And the way that Jacqueline and I teach it is that it is a mix of your strengths as well as your, because you won't have motivation all the time. You only can say, you only stay consistent with something if it's valuable to you, like it's one of your values to your core. And if it's a strength. That's when you start to really love it. It's like your zone of genius. Yeah. For everybody, what are what is your zone of genius? If we were to say, we could take all the things off your plate in your business that you don't want to do anymore, but the things that you really want to do, the thing that lights you up in your business, would you mind sharing in the comments what that would be? So yeah. what are the things that you love? And it could be different. A year from now can change. A year ago, we were all different than we are today. So this is for today. If we were to say, okay, we will remove all the things you don't like and only keep the things that you do. Let us know in the comments what that would be. Okay. When we're thinking about strengths and values, because I know it's hard. Sometimes people don't know what their strengths are. So let's, the strengths are what you're good at. You've naturally always been good at. Values are, and I heard somebody say it this way. He's the author of Indistractable. 
Values are the attributes of the person you want to become. So putting this into what we were talking about today, what are the value, if values are the skill sets you want to develop of the person you want to be, of the person you want to become. And that goes together for your zone of genius. And it's really helpful when you think of that way, because it's hard to know sometimes what your strengths are, what you, what your values are, but if they're attributes or skill sets of the person you want to become, that's when you start to understand like what you're pulled towards, what, you know, you're passionate about, what you could say motivated enough. So you're not going to say motivated all the time. You're going to say consistent with. For me, I really like, we've stayed consistent with the podcast because we love it. We value it. The attributes of a someone getting to use their voice to tell their story, that sort of thing. So my creatives are in the house, right? Because I'm a creative, I'm a designer, I'm an artist by tr- like, in my heart and soul. I've been this since I was little. And so a lot of people are saying they love the designing, they love the creating. So the like, not necessarily the making, it's the designing and creation. It's the visioning for your business. The visioning is you are the, you are the special person in your business that the that is the person that says, this is where I vision this company going. Okay. I'm really inspired by this scent or this color or this bead. And I see this turning into a necklace or a collection or a, that's the fun thing. That's the stuff that gives you the goosebumps. And you're like, yes, that's why you have a creative business. That's, that's, that why, is, you know, that's why you're an entrepreneur. Yeah. You know, y- you are the creative that is actually and good for a lot of you. That is where you should sit is that's where, and you know, as a fashion designer, Mark Jacobs is not designing. He's no longer designing anything in the brand, unless maybe someone comes in for a custom gown or something like that. He is, he is an entire, like even Mark Jacobs, the namesake can be replaced by designers and creative directors in his vision. And then he oversees, but he's not sitting there sketching them out and picking all the fabrics, but he oversees. This is like where you could have creatives that are really highly successful are not even doing the designs anymore, but they have the final say potentially. So I love that you're all getting there because that's right. Like most of you are creatives. And some people said, I love the selling, not the marketing. I love the marketing, not the selling. Some mm-hmm. people like the making. So it's think, really um, important. Identifying with being creative. There, People, we're all creators. It just depends on what you're building in your life. So being a creative is just simply being able to problem solve in some sort of way. So for example, if you're a creative, it doesn't mean like Mark Jacobs using that example, he's not going to be like, if he identified with, I'm the creative, I'm the one who visions every single design. I think that would have stopped him more than allowing for this big creative vision and allowing for other people to bring in their design aspects. And he sees the much, much bigger picture, the visionary of the business, because he also is an entrepreneur, but not the creative. I must be the one that designs everything. Okay. So I know we're getting bigger and bigger, and I want you to start thinking bigger and bigger because there's a reason why all of you are entrepreneurs. Because if you're just creatives in the way that you're thinking, you you could also be a hobbyist, but you need to be building a business to be making money, which is the entrepreneur side of you. And I think that every entrepreneur has something they're building. Some people maybe identify as less creative, but they're equally as creative. Albert Einstein was a very creative person and he was a genius literally at physics and mathematics. Whereas it's just, I think we all have to like lift up that idea of, I'm holding so tightly to this idea of being a creative and understand that you're a visionary for your entire business. You're an entrepreneur that is going to build the life and the values and the strengths that you have, the way that you see it, the way that you've created it, the way that you love it. And like Jacqueline said, not the way that we interpreted it all of our lives. Like the whole Get Untamed journal that we're going through with Glennon is that we learn things about what society perceives and what we perceive for ourselves of what a good friend is, a good mother, what a good entrepreneur is, what a good creative is, what a good wife, a good husband, a good partner. But there, but we learned it and it gets ingrained to us. But what is it that we really want? So I don't know. I just want to play around with that idea for you a little bit too. So while we talk big. This is still Mm -hmm. years out. This isn't like you're going to replace yourself as the maker. You're not going to replace yourself as the bookkeeper just yet. You may not replace yourself from being the fulfillment center for your entire business, but Mm -hmm. 
I want you to hold on to because if time is scarce, if time is your biggest, I want you all to say money is infinite. I can make as much money as I need and know that this is coming from someone who deals with scarcity, but the brilliant, beautiful thing about Mina and I, and I think it goes back to us being first-generation Americans and our families basically having to start from zero is that we saw people start from zero and build lives from Mm -hmm. literally nothing. We didn't have, we did not have anything established in the States when our families came here. They built from nothing. And so we know that we can build from nothing. We know that we can make money. And, and so while I have scarcity running out, it definitely comes from more abundance. And I've worked on my scarcity, but I'm just going to always be transparent about that. So you know that you're not alone and how you may feel. The other idea and the, the juxtaposition, at least for me, is money is infinite. I can make as much as I possibly want to make. I just have to work for it. But also, could I run out? But I can still make it. So I want you all to realize that you can make money. It's infinite when you're an entrepreneur. I want to talk about one of our students in multi-stream machine, because I, t- I know we've talked about Mark Jacobs, but let's just talk about Suzanne of Three Best Bakery, okay? Student in multi-stream machine. She put, I thought it was the making that she wanted to do, but it's actually the designing. And that's a big step. Why? Because she made, was it a thousand, 2000 cookies at the holiday time? Like she In a month or something. It was something bonkers, (laughs) but she- Imagine me imagining like a pile of that many cookies. I just can't even. And it's it's just crazy. Two people, like, (laughs) hi, two people who don't want to cook. I don't want to cook because I don't want to clean. Let alone, and I do decorating, I but know. the cleaning is like the thing. The only part I like about cooking is the eating. And I used to really enjoy cooking. It's just that, I no, don't know. Mina, this is what Suzanne said. Okay, student multi 2,000 cookies over four days for Christmas. Oh my Not God. a month? What are you, giving her all the time in the world? <laughs> That's like 29 extra days. <laughs> Again, That's not crazy. very good at math because 29 plus four does not equal a month. <laughs> no, four days. I thought you said two days. Two days? Four days. Oh, four days. You get the idea. Let's round it. Everyone down. gets the idea. Okay. <laughs> so here is where she says never again. This is where Suzanne started. Okay. When we met her last year at Bestseller Secrets, actually, it was exactly a year ago. We met her and she is a bakery no. in Arkansas. Was it exactly a year ago? That just goes to show you how fast time is. Again, we're going it's crazy. Kind of back to numbers. So Suzanne will yeah. confirm, but I believe it was Best Seller Secrets Challenge beginning of 2021. We had her on because basically she has a bakery. She also sells, yes, one year. This is the crazy thing. Okay, so please update us on the numbers in, in the comments. So one year ago, we meet her during our free challenge, during Best Seller Secrets Challenge, and she feels stuck. She has a bakery. She's making it all herself. She's selling her cookies for a dollar a piece. She's selling them online for a dollar. She's working her booty off in a bakery, making and cooking. And remember, these are not candles you could put on the shelf. This is not jewelry you could put on the shelf. These are cookies that will go bad and need to get mm-hmm. thrown away. Yes, this is the girl with the smash cookies. Okay. Mm-hmm. And we had her on. And in that call, we talked to her and this is what we teach in multi stream machine. One, it was a mindset thing. She had to believe that she was worth more than a dollar a cookie, that she was stuck in a mindset that in Arkansas at her bakery, she was like, she's she comparing- was stuck in the Walmart competitor because being in Arkansas, she was like, yeah, but I'm my, my, the other place that people buy cookies from is Walmart, but she's not competing with Walmart. So that was a mindset thing too. And by the way, Suzanne's like the celebrity on the product class this week because she's on the Monday episode as well. Yeah. So you can uh-huh. listen to her story there. So she's thinking that and it was a mindset shift. And right there, live on the call, we were talking to her about raising her prices. A bunch of you jumped on and actually ordered cookies Before she from raised her. them. <laughs> it's like, get on there and order your so smash cookies. She was crying from all of the support of the product classes and like for all of you buying from her. And then we said, you better buy because she's about to raise her prices and she raised her prices. And then she actually raised her prices again. At one point she found where the market cap hit and so she lowered her prices back again. But no matter what, she's selling them for two and a half times what she originally sold them for and even more for her more decorated cookies. She... Where are you at in your business? Doubled, tripled? Like she's in a- in, More in, like 20X. <laughs> Throwing out numbers now. 
<laughs> One million X to her business. <laughs> Gonna cry. 20 X. No, I'm serious. If that was only a year ago, which it goes to show you, one of the quotes, the best quotes in the article that Jacqueline was talking about, or that quote from Buddha, it was this article that was talking about how time is actually really fast when you're having fun and you're living and doing all the things you want to do. It gets slow when you're not. You so know? Suzanne, where were you in 2020? And then you joined in January or February, you joined Multistream Machine right in the very beginning. So just quickly, and I'll let everyone on Facebook know because I know you've put it in the comments. So where were you in 2020 bakery-wise? Because I think the year before, I think 2019, she had made like $3,000 as a baker and opened up her brick and mortar. And then in 2020, opened up the brick and mortar, cut to COVID, but sold online and people were finding her. 100,000, I believe. Over 100,000. Yeah, in 2020, because she yeah, did yeah. it in 10 months. Yeah, so New Year's I'm Eve. I'm going off of memory, literally here. Yeah, so 20X, not exactly correct, but let's just go here. Okay, so New Year's Eve of 2020, she hit $100,000, okay? She came to the Best Seller Secrets Challenge. She realized her best sellers were her smash cookies, which people on the internet right now are like, oh, is this the smash cookie girl? Yes, because she's known for her best sellers, okay? So let's just put that out there that she's worked that out, okay? Now, my friends, let me tell you 12 months later, 12 months later. And by the way, she's on vacation right now, still joining us on Bosses and Breakfast. So thank you for doing this. Nice. It's also California time. But so in 2021, so 2020, 100,000. In 2021, a year later, after joining multi Shoe Machine, she hit $175,000. Oh my gosh. So proud of you. So currently on vacation and from her bakery. Star. And she's, Go Suzanne, she's also a TikTok star. That's so awesome. I can't see who said that. <laughs> but this is what she said too. Because when we think about the fear of success, if Suzanne a year ago had a fear of success, if she's thought, I'm making all these cookies. And I know she just made 2,000 cookies in four yeah. days. And that's a whole other thing we're going to... She said never again. On. Yeah. You know? And but let's... And, so and she, she didn't make 100... And, again. Yeah. Those 2,000 cookies were not 175,000. It was like probably like eight grand worth of cookies. So again, this is just a small part of her making 175,000 after being a student in MSM. But she says, I now have four part-time employees and one full-time and I'm on salary now. And she's on vacation in California. So, so if you're all- She has all the time to even listen to bosses and breakfast. She's hanging out with us still, right? Not baking cookies, not decorating Uh cookies, not doing cakes and not in her bakery. And also another thing is she's getting a bigger space. She's just, she's actually doubling the space and and moving her bakery. So I want you all to hear this because if Suzanne last year didn't believe in herself and said, because she's the baker, she's the artist, it's her artistry on these cakes and it's her artistry on the cookies. If she last year said, there's no way, one, no way people pay more for the cookies, which they did. Two, no way anyone in my small town in Arkansas can replicate my way of cookies. So I'm not going to hire. She wouldn't have gone from 100K doing all of it herself to $175,000 last year, hiring four people to help her and on vacation. She said, literally going to stare at the ocean until Friday. That sounds amazing. Anyone else want to be staring at the ocean while people are helping you? Record it so I can be there with you. (laughs) (laughs) Because by the way, she has a team that's making, helping her make hundreds of thousands of dollars without Suzanne needing to make the hundreds of thousands of dollars with her own two hands. That is what buying back your time looks like. That is what success looks like. So what do you need to do to make, have that? What do you need to do? And she said, the bakery's still open. The actual physical brick and mortar is still open. So Suzanne did something significant too that I do not want you all to overlook. She invested in herself because there's plenty of people that put in the hustle that burn themselves out because they do try to do it with their own two hands and they burn themselves out because they haven't shortcutted the time for themselves or the skill sets that they need in order to scale or become in their zone of genius or those things. Not only did she invest in herself by going into the mastermind, but she also invested in multi-stream machine. She first invested in a multi-stream machine. Yeah. Started mm-hmm. making more money, started generating revenue, realized investing in herself and in her education and shortcutting how many years she was doing cookies in a bakery by herself. She shortcutted it, started making money and realized, oh my goodness, I resonate with these coaches. I resonate with the way that they teach. 
And then she took it another level and pays the price of the course. She pays that monthly, but she's at a beach. Her bakery is open. Cookies are being Mm -hmm. made. Cakes are being delivered. And she's made $175,000. And this year, Suzanne, where are we going? How much are we making? 300, 400? Where are we going with this? And I'll bet all of you, it's not Suzanne making thousands of cookies to get her there. Yeah. And so then when you think about, okay, she made that money and even down the line, she'll be making more money. Just think of the things she could do with her time, you know, not scary at all. Fear of success is just how you interpret it. She said 350,000 is my goal for 2022. 2020, she made a hundred thousand. 2021, after being a student in multi-stream machine, she made 175,000. Becoming a masterminder, which was the next level up, which is our highest way of working with us, but you do have to be revenue qualified. She has a goal of $350,000 and her new space is three times a square foot to help support her growth. And that is mindset. And that's the support she's getting working with us as her coaches and working with a group of product bosses that understand that they can all reach these bigger levels. So this is what we want you to do. This is, these are your jobs, my friends. We need to start changing the mindset of time being our biggest fear of success because it's going to take time and realize ultimately success is going to buy back your time. Success is going to buy you the life you dream of. Success is going to allow you to be on a beach with people working for you. Staring at the ocean. Staring at the ocean for all of us in the frosty world right now. (laughs) And making money to afford that vacation and making money to hire people, right? This is all the stuff. And so if you and her, um, it's three best bakery. She was on the episode on Monday. So please go listen, support her. Um, by the way, Suzanne, as you're listening, someone said it makes, um, they want to cry for how amazing, um, you are. So just so you, you no, have she said well. she is crying. She said, is, is, is it, it weird, weird that, I'm, that crying? I'm crying of happiness for her? No, not weird at all. There's so many times that I'm just so in awe of our product bosses that I'm just like, I, they did it. They did it. So not weird at all. It's like a usual thing over here, I feel like. Because because you know what she's going through, the struggle. You all yeah. know whatever you sell, it feels hard right now and that it could feel different. But a lot of times, and this is a, a thing, what did I say? The nine out of 10? Um, oh yeah. This is, brace yourselves for this stat. Nine out of 10 people would rather, go ahead, die than, than change. So nine out of 10 people would rather die than change. People obviously don't like to change, but here is the thing. Entrepreneurs need to change. Like they're, they're, they understand that you have to change in order to grow. They understand challenging themselves. The thing with change is not everybody is of that mindset, which is why there's people in your life that are probably like, I can't believe you're starting a business or I can't believe you're doing this or are you going to find a real job or whatever it is. That's the hard part because not everybody loves change. Obviously, nine out of 10 people. And I heard this stat from someone else. It's not like a recognized, I have no idea. So it could be wrong, but let's just go with the nine out of 10 people would rather die than change. But there, are you the one? Because the one person out of those 10 people, you're the one that's going to change your life. You're going to change how people perceive you. You're generationally going to change things. You're going to prove to other people that it's possible because everyone else that's telling you it's not possible or why would you come out with another XYZ business or whatever, they are the nine or they are, they are not the entrepreneurs. They are not the people that see the vision. You are the visionaries. So as we leave you on this, okay. What are you going to do? How are you going to change in 2022? Question mark. How are you going to change in 2022? (laughs) And so when we put you time versus money, okay? And we know time versus money is infinite. Time is not. And you're, but you tell us you're afraid of money because money means you're successful because you won't have enough time. Have we changed this a little bit? Have we started chipping away at this again for you that you realize that actually, in fact, if I grow a business, if I am successful, I can buy back my time. I can choose the things in my life I want to do and the things I don't want to do. And I can give myself more options so I can choose because it gives me more options. Yeah. So I need to be the one. Debt is not an option. Debt is not an option for any of us. It's just scary. So Mm -hmm. as we go into the next few weeks with you, all right, as we go into the next few weeks with you, 
go to theproductboss.com slash best, sign up for the workshop series. The first one is on time. So it's getting your to-do list to done. We're going to help you scale your handmade business in the next workshop. And then we're going to talk about the 80-20 rule for business owners, where you could make 80% of your revenue from 20% of your products. And then we're going to go right into bestseller secrets challenge starting on the 14th of uh, February, Valentine's Day, hang out with us, where we're going to help you figure out how your bestseller can generate this revenue, how you could be like Suzanne, where she could make smash cookies instead of all the fancy decorated cookies and go from 100,000 to 175,000 and have a goal of 350 without losing the time in her life, without losing the things that she wants to do. And then mid-February, multi-stream machine doors are opening again. So if you want to be like Suzanne, if you want to be like Suzanne, I want you to wrap your head around investing in yourself. I want you Mm -hmm. to wrap your head around that money is replenishable. So if you finally stop, get off the treadmill, get off the stationary bike, stop with the two, three years doing the same thing because you are wasting time. Spend the money. Even if you have to put it on a credit card, you will pay it off. I'm telling you, we've seen it. This is just one example of all the people who are on MSM. Let us know your results, right? Like you will see, but you need to make a change. You need to invest in yourself. The money will get paid back. Your time will not. So don't do it on your own. You have to do the work though. This is not by osmosis. No, (laughs) not at all. But we'll give you, Mina and I have worked. We have made millions of dollars. Like we have worked and we will give you the steps to take to save money and make money in your physical product-based business. We will, we have it. We'll give it to you. And you will have what Suzanne had and, and Laura had and Rachel had and all these other people um, that are doing multi-stream machine and have had made money and changed their lives. Well, friends, I hope you had as much fun as we did. If you want to hang out with us live, join us every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern over at our Facebook page or Instagram. And if you want to hear the whole show, click on the link in our show notes and we'll see you over there. Thank you for being here and listening all the way through the Product Boss Podcast. If you love our show and it has helped you in any way in your business, would you mind doing two things for us? Subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode and leave us a review. Reviews help other product entrepreneurs know that this is the place to be to grow their businesses and realize that they're not alone. And we know that you all know that a five-star and honest review helps you sell more products to more people. So you know that your reviews help us reach more listeners around the world. Remember, what we give is what we receive, and we are all about helping each other in the product loss community. We are all in this together. We would be so appreciative of you if you could take the time right now to subscribe, leave a review, and even share this episode on social or someone you know so we can impact more lives. And remember, subscribing means that you will get notified each time we release a new episode so you never miss a thing. You have helped us grow and climb into the top 10 of all marketing podcasts and together we can keep climbing. Thank you, friends. And remember, there is room at the top for all of us. This episode is brought to you by the Shop One in Five Pledge and Small Business Shopping Directory. It's a commitment to make one in five of your purchases from a small business online or offline. So head to shoponeinfive.com to take the pledge. And friend, while you are there, check out and shop from hundreds of small businesses in the Small Business Shopping Directory. It's the go-to directory to discover, support, and shop small businesses all in one place. Head to shop1in5.com.